Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at another one of my favorite applications. And this time I thought I would expand it out to iOS and take a look at one of my favorite FTP applications, and that is Transmit by Panic Software. Now, Transmit is an FTP application. Uh, Transmit was made by Panic Software originally on the Mac, and then they created this iOS version. And one of the things I really like about this application is, especially if you're working with servers or you're working with web servers and that sort of thing, uh, to be able to have remote access on your iOS device, whether that's your iPhone or whatever, uh, to do all kinds of things like access files or even change uh, HTML content on your website. Maybe you found a spelling error or something like that that you need to fix. Uh, Transmit is one of those applications that works perfectly for the job. And so what I thought I'd do is go in depth a little bit and show you how the application works and how to get started. Uh, now Transmit is uh, is $10 basically uh, for the application. And like I said, it's, uh, it's money well spent because it is a full-fledged iOS application. And more of these applications uh, hopefully will be developed for iOS devices, especially as we use them more and more for our everyday needs. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and open Transmit here. And so here we are inside the Transmit application. Now notice I have Touch ID set up with Transmit. One of the great things is that you can set up Touch ID to protect all of the information that you have inside the application. So I'm just going to go ahead and enable that. And here we are in the Transmit uh, interface. Now you'll notice a couple of things. I am on an iPad here, so obviously if you're on an iPhone, it's going to be a more of a vertical view and you'll see uh, just one of these screens at a time as opposed to the two screens. That's one of the advantages of having uh, the bigger iPad screen. Uh, but on the left-hand side is my local documents folder within Transmit. And you can see it says local down there on the bottom. And on the right-hand side are any remote connections uh, that I may set up to my servers. And you can see there I've got a few options like Quick Connect. There's even a history and shared servers over here on this side that you can take a look at. And so I can begin to add those servers as I go. Now before I get into how to add the servers and everything, let's just take a look at some of the settings. So on the bottom left hand corner there, I'm just going to tap on the little settings icon and it's going to bring up this nice settings interface here. Now there's a few things that you can do with this. You notice it's got panic sync and if I just tap on panic sync, what that does is that allows you to sync your servers and credentials uh, with the panic uh, servers so that that way all of your settings will be in sync across all your devices. Again, this comes in really handy uh, when you're using, let's say, an iPhone and an iPad, and instead of having to put everything in two places, you can go ahead and sync it across your devices, and uh, all of those things will then, all of those settings will be uh, on your iPhone or on your iPad, depending on where you set it up. So let's tap back to settings. Uh, you notice I can set up Touch ID and a passcode. And so if I come in here, I'll hit Touch ID again. And I can require a passcode after so many minutes. I can set up a complex passcode, Touch ID. I can turn off the passcode or change it, and I can erase the data if I want to do that. And so if you uh, have tried to log in after 10 failed attempts, it'll erase all the data on here so that you don't have to worry about someone getting access to your information. I'm just going to tap back from settings. Now, the other thing you have here is uh, the option to set up keys. Uh, you can set up keys for your server here, and you can see I have no keys right now, but if I just hit the plus, I can generate a new key or import uh, from various locations. If I just say generate new key here, you can see that I have various options. So I can set up a nickname for this key, so I could just name it whatever I want. So in this case, let's just go ahead and name it test. Uh, I can set up a passphrase if I want to, and then I can choose the type of key, RSA or DSA, you can see it changes, and I can change the size of the encryption here in terms of uh, the amount that I want to do. And then if I just uh, tap on generate, you see I get this nice graphic where it's generating the particular key, and when it's done, I see this test key that I set up. If I just tap on it, you'll see I can copy the public key and the private key to set up uh, you know, more secure connection to certain websites and that sort of thing. So let me just go ahead and go back and we'll tap back into settings. Now the other thing I have is notifications and so I can choose to be notified when transfers are complete or failed or they're in conflict. And so I usually let those uh, stay the way they are so that I can get that notification, especially if I pop out of the app or something like that. Uh, and then I've got my transfers here and I can choose what to do when I have conflicts. When I have conflicts downloading files or folders or uploading files or folders, what I want it to do. Do I want it to ask me what to do, replace the existing file, try to resume the transfer or skip? So I can set those settings depending on what I prefer there on the transfers. 
So that gives you an idea about the various settings that you can do inside of Transmit. So let me go ahead and just say done here. And let's go in and take a look at some things that we can do. Now on the local side, you'll notice I've got this documents folder here with an item that's sitting inside of there. Let me just tap on this particular file so you get an idea of what's here. Here's a, a really old uh, Mac OS server uh, I graphic here. I believe this is for uh, Snow Leopard, so that shows you how old that is. But you'll notice the different information that I get there. I can highlight this at any time and change the name if I want to. Uh, to whatever I want it to be uh, and just type in that. I also get the file size, the kind, the path, uh, all that information and then I can even work with permissions and you notice this I get this permissions panel that pops up and it allows me to change the different permissions so I can choose it to read, write, or execute and I can do that for user, group, or world and set it up however I want. Uh, so again that's a, a nice way to be able to even set permissions for the different files and things that you have on your server so that's just a really nice touch. I'm just going to say cancel here in this case. Now down below I can uh, act on this file by sending it to somewhere and that will give me the share sheet. I can upload it to a particular server, add to iCloud Drive, even compress it. And then I can copy the path, move it, duplicate it, or delete it. And so it gives me various options there. So like I've heard since if I tap on upload to, it's going to give me the screen where I put in the server information of where I want to upload this particular file. So I can take files and things that are on my computer and upload them uh, or even download them to different locations or even move them around. So let me just go ahead and tap on cancel there. So again, a, a really nice application. So let's take a look now for a second on the right hand side. And uh, on the right hand side there you'll notice that I've got the server area. And if I just kind of come on this side, uh, let me just pop this down here. You'll notice I've got the remote uh, area down here that uh, I have. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our remote servers, since many of you may be connecting to your servers using an application like this. So I have a quick connect, I have history, and I have shared servers. And so if I tap on the plus button, though, so if I tap quick connect, it's going to take me to a screen where I can put in information uh, on my server, and I can even add it to my existing servers. Uh, I can do the same thing by tapping on the plus button at the top and choosing a new server or a new server group. And so what I can do is group servers if I want to uh, by location or type of server. It's just a way to organize the various servers, especially if you've got multiple ones that you're connecting to. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Quick Connect just to get right in. Now, there are a number of ways that I can connect to a server. You see it says SFTP there, but if I tap on this, I can use SFTP, FTP with implicit SSL, FTP with TL, uh, SSSL, or FTP. And then I can connect by WebDAV via HTTPS, WebDAV by itself, and then they have Amazon S3 and Dream Objects on there as uh, additional cloud uh, connections that you can make through the application. So in this case, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and just set up uh, a regular server here. And let's just say we're going to connect to our Mac server. Now, in order to connect to your Mac server, you're going to want to use WebDAV via HTTPS. Uh, unless you want to set up the remote uh, connection on your server or you have the FTP service set up, uh, this would be the way that you would connect if you want to do file sharing using Transmit. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on this WebDAV via HTTPS, and you see it takes me into the screen, where I can then start to name the server and put in the port information, the username, and the password uh, that I want to have on there. So let me just go ahead and enter that information real quick here, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now I've got all of my information in there, and uh, in this case I'm going to be connecting to a local server, but uh, it should show you the same thing as if you're connecting remotely. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. Now what I can do if I want, instead of, I could hit connect up on the upper right, or I could just add this to my server. So I'm going to tap add to servers, and what it's going to do is give me this window here where I can give it a nickname, and so I'm just going to call it home server because it's, uh, it, let's say it's a home server that I've got. And you'll notice that I can ask for the password each time. I can choose what, even what root path or URL I want for the files to go into. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't need that. Um, I could choose to ask each time for the password. Or if I hit that little key there, there is, if I tap on that, a key here, you notice there is integration with one password. So that if you do forget your 
uh, login or password for some reason, or hopefully you've created a complex one so you don't even know what it is, you can tap one password there and have it fill it in for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, add this in here. So let me just type the password in. Okay, now that I've got that in, I'm going to go ahead and tap on Save. And so now what it's done is it saved that information to my main server uh, page, which I'll show you in a minute. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and just tap on Connect. And we're going to attempt to connect to this server. And you see that now I've connected to the server and it's logged me in. And these are all of the shares that I have set up on my Mac server. And you can see I've got some of the things that we've tested with on the server test files and that sort of thing. And it even pulls up the wiki files that we've got uh, because those are served up through WebDAV as well. So I tap on server test. You can see I've got my different projects here. And you see I've got a JPEG that I can tap on and it'll pull up that file and there's there's a particular picture that I took with all of the different information there as well as well as where it's located on my server and I can do all of these different things to it in terms of moving it copying the path or even adding it to my photo library if I want to do that or to iCloud Drive if I want to get back I just tap on the top and you can see I've got my file path back to wherever I want to go I can go uh, back to let's say the main server test area and there's all of my information if I wanted to change multiple things at a time I just tap on this check box and you see I can select multiple folders uh, at the same time and then have uh, different information. I can look at view options and sort it by name, size, kind, and date, ascending or descending, and I can display folders above files, hidden files, relative dates, and text coding. So again, it gives me some options on some ways that I can do that. When I'm done, you notice here I can move them or delete them up at the top, and I even have the ellipsis to duplicate or download, and I can do that for multiple files. Or I can just say done, and I'm back to where I was. Uh, so again, you can see how easy it is to get into this information. Now, it's really handy because you could get into, let's say, your uh, web server for your website, pull up the actual HTML from your website, and edit it. So let me go ahead and put that information in. I'll take you back to the main screen and show you how that works. Okay, so here I am uh, FTP'd into my website here, and uh, it has all the various files and such. And so if I wanted to edit the HTML, I could just go to the public HTML folder that I got here, and you can see all my different files are in there. And if let's just say I go to the About Me file, and uh, this shows a bunch of information, and you can see the, it displays the HTML above, so you can kind of see information that's on my website. And I've got all of these different options down here, and one is to edit and transmit. So if I just tap edit and transmit, what it does is it now brings up the HTML for my website, and all I've got to do is go find the actual uh, text that I want to change or any changes I want to make and I can then code the HTML here tap on save in the upper right hand corner there and basically have updated my website remotely uh, again you need to know a little about HTML depending on how you're using this but you can see how helpful this can become like if you find a typo on your site and you're out and about and want to change it you can make those changes right from your iPhone using this application so again it's a really full-fledged application and well worth it uh, let me just kind of close this here and come back so that's Transmit for iOS, and like I said, as uh, more and more of these applications are getting more powerful on iOS devices, they start uh, allowing us to do more things with our iPhones and our iPads than we could before. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.